We were all young and we were all fearless and we had all these ideas. But Dom was the whiz designer kid from Northwestern University who brought back with him kudos for his production designs there while he wowed everybody here at the Ateneo and at the UP, uh, UP with his lectures. In the short time that I myself had been back here from studies abroad before meeting the Dom, I had worked with the most exciting names in the visual and performing arts world. Names like those of Bobby Chavez, Ray Albano, Lee Aguinaldo, Arturo Cruz, Teddy Hidalgo. So you might say that Madon and I kind of sized each other up in the beginning. <laughs> After all, the word must have gotten to him that Eddie and Connie and I had the biggest plans and the smallest budgets. And would he really want to work with us? And I wasn't sure how easy it would be to work with this whisk kid circling around me, sizing me up. But we gave in to the inevitable and we started to work together. But how could we not with this wonderful, incredible theater we had? So I went on this amazing journey with Boudon and he with me. The first trip we took was to the Nutcracker Snowland and the Sugar Fairies Palace. Nice, easy, sweet, and safe. Then we moved on to the meadows and forests of Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream and to the darker cavernas and fields of Carmina Lovano. As we got to know each other better, we added a game of challenges. Madon, who loved opera, said, Alicia, I knew this was trouble, but something big. Other than my mother, Madon was the only person who would dare call me by that name. <laughs> His challenge, for us to climb higher, to scale mountains full of operatic grandeur. My response, Madon, for I simply could not manage a some door. <coughs> I grew up having breakfast with opera because my mama was a voice teacher and coach. I have essayed into classical ballet with Giselle and Nutcracker as a personal choreographic challenge to myself. But look at me. I do modern dance. I don't do opera. I do barefoot, a terre, on the ground. He simply brushed off my protest, took my hand, and led me to the land of the Capulets and the Montagues, and gave me the most heart-stopping production sets and costumes for Romeo and Juliet. As I sat in the darkened theater, after our first full production rehearsal run, I was overcome with the realization that this was only possible with the law. Uh, and of course, Monique Duque and Catch Toy and Rudy Vidal and Jaime Lin and Nestor Lin and all the wonderful artists of what was then called the CCP Dance Company. That was quite a team I was blessed to work with. But it was Badon who listened to me and who looked into my soul and came up with what was a more vivid and more dramatic visual interpretation than I could ever hope for. My turn for a challenge. But Dom, I know you're good, but if you're really great, you would create the same magic on that stage at one half price. You are up for <laughs> He sputtered what sounded like humbug, probably worse in Ilocano, and walked away highly insulted. But the challenge was a challenge. So we went on to Spain for Don Jose and his Carmen. His set was so stunning in its simplicity, yet so perfect for my work. And it came in at one third the budget. You can see it looked but only me. 
We went on to many other distant places, too numerous to list here. But always the most rewarding moment for me was to see Badong backstage after a performance with a wisp of a smile on that handsome face. By this time, I knew what that meant. Good job, well done. This was not a compliment he bestowed too often. Badong was a past master with the highest standards, and he made no bones about that. He learned. He never compromised when it came to vision and statement and quality. Neither did you. You heard that loud and clear. You learned. He was unforgiving if he caught you even thinking of doing less than what you were capable of. You learned. His criticisms made your day or they stung. You learned. And God help you if you were on the wrong side of the discussion table. No one was as articulate and as maddeningly knowledgeable as Badong, rattling off at machine gun speed literary and historical facts and opinions. I have seen a few poor souls reduced to tears and ready to throw all his empty pots at him. <laughs> they learned. But he was also the most generous of spirit and heart, always so wise, so witty, such a visionary, and to so many he was the teacher. But to the lucky few, and I'd like to think that I was one of those lucky ones, he was a fine and true friend. The best deal in town for us was an invite to Badon's lunch or dinner at his home. Badong was a gourmand who reveled in good food and wine and surrounded by friends, exhilarating conversation, all inhaling his world of the finest opera and symphony and a fantastic collection of films and paintings and Filipiniana. Our last destination on this journey was to the land of Rama and Tita and Hanuman. And was that fun. We spared no time going through the smallest detail, choosing the right tone of vermilion red for Kulides Nostari, or the proper cut for Nonoy Koylan's turban. And he filled the stage with such a spectacle that made everybody laugh and sing as they sat in the aisles of the CCP. It was that successful. But, there were many others who came on board and joined us on this journey. And as artistic director and thus the driver of this bus of Ballet Philippines, as the company was now called, I had a best seat. It was just as much fun watching the dog surprise Edna Vida with his Captain Hook's ship and fitting Antonio's delightful crocodile costume for Edna's much beloved Peter Pan presenting the most charming village scene to Bill Morgan for his copilia, offering to Denise Reyes an unbelievable shimmering tabernacle for a day, taking yet another direction with this pristine, white, visually arresting set for epinatus's images. But like most things, this journey of ours of 20 years came to a crossroad. I felt it was time to hand over the proverb proverbial keys to a younger generation of highly spirited, extremely talented, and creative line of artistic directors, some of whom are present here and are known to you, who have since then carried on with the work and kept Bali Philippines alive and strong, dancing, teaching, and continuing with the vision and the mission we had set out from the start. 